Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense. Today we have another video in my pediatrics playlist. We will compare between passive autoimmune thrombocytopenia and isoimmune thrombocytopenia. These are not the same. Collectively, they are known as neonatal immune-mediated thrombocytopenia. So let's compare between these two. As you know, it is thrombocytopenia, therefore I will get superficial bleeding skin and mucous membrane bleeding skin will include petechiae purpura ecchymoses mucous membrane bleeding will include stuff like bleeding from my gum epistaxis etc this video is just some excerpts from the original neonatal immune mediated thrombocytopenia it was a very long video where we dove deeper into the details as you know your blood is made of plasma and cells the cells include red blood cells white blood cells and platelets well technically platelets are not even cells they are just pieces of their mother the megakaryos site. Platelets come from the megakaryocytes, which come from probe megakaryocytes, which come from megakaryoblasts, which come from myeloid stem cells, which come from pluripotent stem cells, which are in the bone marrow. So what's the normal function of the platelets? To make a platelet plug and stop the bleeding. This is called primary hemostasis. Primary hemostasis, who's the hero? Platelets. This is followed by secondary hemostasis, or the heroes, coagulation factors. Primary hemostasis disorders or platelet problems could be quantitative, problems in the platelet number, or quantitative, a problem in the platelet function. The former is called thrombocytopenia, the latter is called thrombasthenia. This will give you an abnormal platelet count. This will give you an abnormal bleeding time. Pause and review. True thrombocytopenia, not to be confused with the pseudo false one, is divided into problems with underproduction, overdestruction, or splenic sequestration of the platelets. So why would we see true thrombocytopenia in children under production, overdestruction, or splenic sequestration? The spleen is swallowing them. The underproduction could be congenital diseases or acquired diseases. The overdestruction could be medications, could be other diseases such as HUS, giant hemangioma, because also the hemangioma acts as if it's a spleen. It swallows lots of platelets. DIC or immune mediated. This is today's topic. Today we're talking about two diseases. One is called neonatal passive autoimmune thrombocytopenia. The other is called neonatal isoimmune thrombocytopenia. I will tell you the difference shortly. But please understand that neonatal immune thrombocytopenia is not the same as ITP or immune thrombocytopenic purpura. These two diseases are in one land, ITP is in another land. Yes, they are similar, but they are not the same. This is more likely to happen in a fetus or a neonate, just before birth or just after birth. ITP can happen in young children, not necessarily after birth, let's say 2-year-old, 3-year-old, 7-year-old, or it can happen to old people, 20, 30, 50. This disease is caused by antibodies from the mother, crossing the placenta, going from the mother to the baby, destroying the baby's platelet. ITP is triggered by usually a viral infection. No one knows why, but this viral infection for some reason or another triggered a response of antibodies attacking the platelets. But these are not my mother's antibodies, these are my own antibodies. Big difference. Clinically, the baby will have superficial bleeding, mucocutaneous. And now on to today's topic. Neonatal immune media thrombocytopenia has two subtypes, passive autoimmune thrombocytopenia and isoimmune thrombocytopenia. What's the difference? Here is the difference. In passive autoimmune thrombocytopenia, the mother was already sick. Sick with what? With immune thrombocytopenic purpura. Mommy already had antibodies against her own platelets. Okay, so the mother had thrombocytopenia. The mother had antibodies against her own platelets. These antibodies left the mother's blood, crossed the placenta, went into the baby's blood, and attack the baby's platelets. And now, even the baby will have thrombocytopenia. So in passive autoimmune thrombocytopenia, 
Mommy had passive antibodies, antibodies that were available before. They are historic. They are not intended to attack the baby, but they cross the placenta and attack the baby's platelets. On the other hand, in isoimmune thrombocytopenia, the baby's platelets carried an unknown antigen, an antigen that the mother has never seen. But hey, medicosis, this is the mother's own baby in her womb. Where did the baby get the unknown antigen from? From the father. Oh, I get it. This unknown antigen came from the father. The unknown antigen is on the baby's red blood cell. This unknown antigen is going to cross the placenta from the baby's blood to the mother's blood. And now, mommy has never seen this antigen before. Danger, danger, we have been invaded by an outsider. Let's attack it. Let's develop new, brand new antibodies against those antigens. Not pre-existing antibodies, nope, brand new antibodies against the antigen. We'll destroy the antigen. We'll cross the placenta. Oh, I saw the antigen again. I will destroy it again. And now the baby's platelets will be destroyed. The mother had normal platelet count. Mother's platelets were fine. Mommy did not have thrombocytopenia. However, the baby has thrombocytopenia. That's the difference between passive and isoimmune. Let's do it again. Passive autoimmune thrombocytopenia. Mommy had ITP. Mommy had pre-existent antibodies against her own platelets. These antibodies left her blood, crossed the placenta, went to the baby's blood, destroyed the baby's platelets. Now both of them have thrombocytopenia. How about isoimmune thrombocytopenia? The mother is fine. The mother has normal platelets, but the mother was triggered by an unknown antigen on the baby's platelet that the baby had acquired from his father. The antigens cross the placenta, now they are in the mother's blood, they trigger her immune response, mom will form brand new antibodies against the antigen, these antibodies will cross the mother's placenta, they will attack the baby's platelets, and now the baby has thrombocytopenia, but the mother has normal platelets. Do you know this disease is similar to what? Do you remember RH incompatibility? Yeah, mommy was RH negative. The baby was RH positive. The baby's antigen triggered the mother and now mommy's gonna make antibodies to attack the baby. However, there is a big difference. RH incompatibility spared the first pregnancy. The first newborn will be fine. However, the second pregnancy, the second baby will be destroyed. But here, whether we're talking about passive or isoimmune, in both cases, the first pregnancy can be affected. Even the first pregnancy is vulnerable. The first pregnancy is vulnerable, the second is vulnerable, the third might even be more vulnerable, etc. Let's do it again. The mother has antibodies. Cross the placenta, attack the baby's platelets. All right, when you have antibody against the platelet like this, Who's gonna attack this complex, the macrophage of the baby? Where does this happen? In the spleen of the baby. Spleen or any of the reticuloendothelial organs. Spleen, liver, nodes, etc. Why did the baby's macrophage attack the baby's own platelets? Because this looks weird. Platelets should not have antibodies hanging on top of them. So this is abnormal. The baby is cleaning house, so the baby cleaned his own platelets but the antibodies came from the mother. What's the incidence of neonatal immune-mediated thrombocytopenia? One in every 5,000 live births. Let's talk about symptoms. Do you think we'll have superficial bleeding or deep bleeding, superficial bleeding? Petechia, purpura, ecchymosis, especially petechia and purpura. Are they localized or are they all over the baby's body? All over the body, because this is not a localized disease. This is a generalized disease. We have platelets in every part of our body because they are floating in the bloodstream. So the baby will be born with generalized petechia and purpura. The symptoms appear within the first few days after delivery. In certain cases, the disease can be severe, causing intracranial hemorrhage, bleeding inside the baby's skull or brain. And this is more likely to happen during vaginal childbirth, normal labor, because the baby's head is getting squeezed inside the mother's birth canal while coming out of the mother's womb. And this squeezing presses on the baby's skull. So now we have two forces in action. Number one, the pressure on the baby's skull. Number two, 
the thrombocytopenia. And that's why if we know that the baby has neonatal immune mediated thrombocytopenia, we should deliver the baby via cesarean section and not by normal delivery in order to protect the baby's head from getting squeezed into oblivion. How do I diagnose this? It is similar to ITP which means we have thrombocytopenia due to an immune disease. Platelet count is low, I just said thrombocytopenia. Lean time is prolonged because these platelets are low in number and therefore collectively they do not function as much, so you have an abnormal prolonged bleeding time. PT, INR and PTT are normal because your coagulation factors are fine. How do I treat before delivery, during delivery, and after delivery? Before delivery, IVIG and steroids to the mother. Why? They are immunosuppressants. They will stop and suppress platelet destruction. During delivery, please deliver via C-section. After delivery, baby has no symptoms, no treatment. Give steroids, IVIG, transfusion of platelets if it's really bad. Some immunosuppressants such as rituximab, il thrombobag and romiplostim will try to boost the thrombocytes, which are the platelets. And since the platelets are getting destroyed in the spleen, you can remove the spleen as last resort. Pause and review. Today's topic was about neonatal immune-mediated thrombocytopenia. Here is everything you need to know in one slide. Pause and review. Now let's review the adult primary immune thrombocytopenia or immune thrombocytopenic purpura or ITP from Picmonic. Let's go. ITP usually occurs after infection or immunization. Basically, we have antibody the antibody attacking your own platelets. Many patients are asymptomatic, look at this, thumbs up. But some patients will get bleeding symptoms. Look at this, we have bleeding from the nose, epistaxis, or petechia purpura ecchymoses. Give corticosteroids, here is a corta on steroids, and IVIG, the intravenous gold goblin. Poor intravenous immunoglobin. For more beautiful mnemonics like this, go to picmonic.com slash VIP hookup slash medicosis and they will hook you up. If you like this video, you will love my cardiac pharmacology course on my website, medicosisperfectgenetics.com. It has 50 videos with notes and cases. I also have a kidney physiology course and you can get a 40% discount towards any course on my website. Just use discount code KIDNEY at checkout. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website, download my courses. Go to Picmonic for animated medical mnemonics. Thank you so much for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.